everyone and welcome! The story of Zone and Piltover may be behind us, but that left us with a lot of interesting facts and easter eggs hidden in the lore. Those of you that loyally watch my videos may know about most of these facts, so I really hope there will be at least one thing you didn't know. If this video is successful I may do more facts about the other parts of Runeterra. So let's see how it all ends up. The high-end progress of both Piltover and Zone relies heavily on Hextech technology. The name Hextech obviously comes from the Hextech crystals, but did you know where these crystals come from? There are synthetic Hextech crystals which are created with runic alchemy and because of that they are less powerful. But let's talk about the originals. The Hex crystals were originally called First Crystals. They were discovered by Camille's family in the deserts of Shurima. There they were protected by the Brekern, a special species of crystal scorpions. These scorpions wouldn't survive for long on their own. They needed a source of energy to empower their lives. That's why they dug deep underground and looked for what they called life stones or name stones, which, you guessed it, we know as hex crystals. But these life stones were not meant for anyone. Every Brekern had to look for a crystal that specifically called to them. And once they found it, they would burrow themselves underground and began the fusing ritual. Once a Brekern was fused with a crystal, all their memories would be transformed into the stone. And here is the key part. Because all of their memories are stored in these stones, if they die and another Brekern finds their stone, all their past experience and memories are passed on to younger generations. On top of that, all these crystals can communicate with each other, with what Skarner described as singing. And remember the word singing, because we will get back to it later. So when these explorers started ripping the stones from the Brekern, they were literally ripping not only their souls from their bodies, but also the souls of the hundreds of Brekern before. And because they can communicate with each other, every time a stone was being ripped from their body, all other Brekern could hear all their screams. So keep in mind that every time a hex crystal got shattered in any of the stories, generations of Brekern died. In Echo's story, there is a part where he raided a recently demolished laboratory. There he found a broken crystal, where, to quote the story, the shards hummed like they were trying to sing a broken melody, the song growing louder when near other pieces. While to Echo that may seem magical, these were the voices of the dying Brekern. As a side note, looking at all the hints, it seems like the demolished laboratory was the old singed slab. Also, according to the original Echo Q&A, his sword is an arm from a clock tower. In the same part of the story where he found the crystal, you may have heard the name Vigilnauts, which were the brutes looking for the same crystal. These brutes are Victor's drugged men, which he sends on missions to gather hex crystals. That's why these Vigilnauts also appeared in Jace's story. And even in Echo's cinematic seconds, where a Vigilnaut tried to kill him to get the Hex Crystal from his device. Speaking of Victor, did you know that the religion where people sacrificed their flesh for augments to satisfy their goddess was not started by Victor? This religion was started by the people who saw Victor's work and they realized it only brought great things. Meanwhile, Victor hates it. He augments people to remove their human mistakes and their emotional bounds that usually kill them. And religions are just a form of emotional binding. One of Victor's creations, Blitzcrank, was a golem so smart he was able to upgrade his own systems and remove his own thinking limits. This allowed Blitzcrank to evolve into something with the body of a machine and the mind of a human. Seeing how successful the creation was, Victor tried to replicate Blitzcrank's technology, but Blitzcrank never told him that he upgraded his own systems, so Victor was never able to create another smart golem. There was a part in Blitzcrank's story where he saved a family together with their cat from a burning house. It also mentioned that he saved a miniature dancing doll, which was one of the dolls Oriana created before she left her home. Near the end of Vorik's story, there is a thug who called him the Howler. 
At first this confused me since the howler is what people of Zone call their main lift. But this is actually reference to one of the three stories of how the lift got its name. The first story says that the name comes from the sounds it makes while it's active. The second story says there is a ghost of a lost lover who haunts the lift. The third story says there is a metal wolf who lives on the top of the very peak of the lift. Thus, some of the people who saw Warwick believe that he is the wolf from this legend. Though Evelyn is assigned to the Shadow Isles, she is an assassin for hire working around Runeterra. In her short story, by which I mean her story is really short, she talks to a Kem Baron in Zon, whose name is Saito Takeda. This is the same Baron who founded the project which experimented on Zack. And speaking of Zack, did you know that he adapts his emotions to whatever people feel around him? And besides changing shapes as he wishes, he can also change the temperature of his body to a point at which he can melt metal. When Mundo's story was released, a lot of you asked me how come Mundo could see Echo reversing time. Well, this has to do with the chronology of the stories. First, there was his champion bio, followed by the short story Lulabi, followed by the cinematic seconds, and finally the comic Chrono Break, where his device gets damaged. Because of that, he can rewind himself, but not the world anymore. There are also theories speculating whether Echo, Jinx and Vi are related. Up until the Zone update, these were nothing but speculations, since Riot usually likes to avoid player-created theories. But this seems to be the first one where Riot agreed. There are so many hints about Jinx and Vi being related now that you just can't ignore it. It all started with the old quote from Holding Abyss. You look like your sister. Wait, I'm not supposed to talk about that. Unfortunately, there never was another strong hint, so her sister could be absolutely anyone. Now there are two more hints in play. In Vi's story, it is mentioned that she was found in an abandoned cradle big enough for two meaning her sister was taken away by someone else. In Warwick's story, we learn that he has a bloody memory of a small girl. In Jinx's story, we learn that one of the reasons why she might be crazy is because of a trauma from her childhood. These are tied together when Warwick taunts Jinx. You were there. Let me forget. And then when he taunts Vi, he mentions that he had seen her before, or someone who looks like her. The fear in your eyes, sir. I've seen it before. To me, this looks like a pretty strong hint that Vi and Jinx are in fact sisters. Unfortunately for Echo, there are no relations there. His quotes just reference the fact that they know each other as two guys from two different gangs. Vi had her own gang and Echo had his gang of orphans. The chances are they worked with each other, as most gangs cooperate from time to time. You forgot your roots, Vi. You used to be cool. You'll always be Zahn to me. One day, you'll come back to Zahn. Jenna also finally got some proper lore and she has a unique way of existing. Basically, Jenna is a being which only exists and has power as long as people believe in her. The moment people stop praying, she loses everything. It is highly probable that Caitlyn's original rifle was crafted by Miss Fortune's mother. Also, Urgot still doesn't have a lot of lore, but that might be because he is bound to Noxus and Demacia, so the chances are he is coming soon. And finally, Dr. Mundo is not an actual doctor. And with that I will have to end this video. Did you learn something new? This was aimed more at those people who don't watch my videos and are more interested in the facts and easter eggs of Runeterra. So again, sorry if you knew everything. But if you like this and you would like to see more, feel free to tell me below. And don't forget to subscribe for more lore updates and follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Discord if you want to chat. Thank you all so much for watching my videos and for your feedback, you know I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you come again.